Alright, so Resident Evil 4 is a classic. It's a masterpiece that influenced how third-person shooters would play for the next two generations of video games, along with how the Resident Evil series would play, essentially to this day with the remakes. And Resident Evil 4 Remake just came out a few months ago. Ignore that. After Resident Evil 3 Remake's mixed reception upon release, many people were extremely skeptical of the idea of an RE4 Remake. Considering that not only is the original game still relevant with how often it's ported and remastered, but because there's little reason for remaking it for the sake of improvement. Resident Evil 4 is among the greatest games ever made. It is an expertly paced, made, and played work of art. I don't want to oversell its value, but it's as close to perfect you could get with a third-person shooter, and its influence is still felt to this day. Being a part of a survival horror series, RE4 is paced like one. Instead of big scares, RE4 will present you with huge swarms of ganados, a mini-boss, a unique gameplay scenario, or a boss. But in between these moments of actions will be quiet treks through a haunting world, and they'll be filled with item slash ammo collecting or puzzle solving while still keeping you tense because they could drop anything on you. Resident Evil 4 is often called a survival action game, and for good reason. It employs many of the same philosophies as a horror game, but you're equipped to fight. And like I said, this game was as influential as four blokes from Liverpool. You saw its torch carried by the likes of Dead Space, The Last of Us, Gears of War, hell, the new Resident Evil remakes. But the remake was gonna happen anyway, and we're not here to discuss it. Like, yeah, it's fucking awesome you could duel against a, a fucking chainsaw, but that's for another time. What I want to discuss is this growing trend of gamers who have begun claiming that Resident Evil 4 has aged poorly. Isn't that a popular word these days? First, let's discuss what aging poorly means, because that's a phrase that's tossed around a lot. When we say something has aged poorly, it means that it hasn't gotten better over time, or it does not work well in modern times. Video games are most often pointed to for not aging well, but the same applies to books and film as well. In 1927, the first sound film ever made was The Jazz Singer. Directed by Alan Crossland and starring Al Johnson, it is about a young man born into a strict family who dreams of performing on stage. And he performs blackface. On one hand, it is an extremely historic film that we will remember for ages, and I'm even interested in watching it, especially since you can watch the whole thing on Wikipedia. On the other hand, its depiction of an extremely racist act will forever taint its perception and remind us of the kind of era it was made in. Video games don't have it quite as bad as film and literature with depictions. I mean, sure, sometimes you get oil man, and sometimes you think about how many modern first-person shooters were set in the Middle East, which might have been a form of propaganda to boost recruitment for the U.S. military, and sometimes you think of Custer's Revenge and... You know what, let's just focus on the gameplay. When it comes to video games, what's often considered to have aged poorly is when the gameplay doesn't stand up to today's standards. Ghosts and Goblins on the NES, while still considered a classic to the Nintendo Entertainment System library, hasn't aged well due to a combination of poor visuals, a poorly implemented timer, and egregious difficulty that make it a game most people avoid. In a similar way, Mega Man 2 hasn't aged gracefully, depending on what version you play. Well, the gameplay is fucking Kino all the way through, the game suffers graphically with the amount of flickering going on in it. Design conventions that are embraced today make what came before more difficult to swallow. For console shooters, controlling them with anything other than the Argonaut shooter style is unimaginable. But the question is, has Resident Evil 4's gameplay aged poorly? Most people point to the tank controls as a sign the game is poorly designed. This is fucking stupid, because the people who say this are big dumb babies who only play goddamn Valorant and expect every game they install to play the same. People who designed tank controls knew what they were doing when they made the game, and even amongst tank controls, Resident Evil 4 controls like a dream. It's tight, with Leon's movements more precise than ever before. I will concede that tank controls are meant to restrict movement, and that is not everyone's cup of tea. Yet despite that, Leon controls fluidly. This is a game that allows the player to approach enemies to spin kick them, then immediately retreat with the feasibility of doing everything with no damage. 
I've seen people criticize RE4 for not allowing the player to aim while shooting. These are from the same babies who only play Valorant and froth at the mouth if a game from 1993 doesn't have an FO fucking V slider. I don't know how serious this criticism is, but the game is designed around shooting without moving. There seemed to be a resentment that the game doesn't allow you the choice to move while shooting. Moving while shooting allows the player to safely maneuver, but typically their shots will be less accurate than they would be if they stood still and fired. Resident Evil 4 only allows you to shoot while standing still. Leon holds up the gun, and the laser pointer serves as your reticle, as a side note, but this is better than most shooters that present a reticle to a player rather than an in-context reticle for both a player and character. I don't always believe that a mechanic feeling bad is a criticism. Going back to tank controls, that's meant to make the player feel tension with movement. It doesn't necessarily feel good, but that's the point. And shooting while standing still is meant to be stressful. You'll either hit one of the ganados and it will stagger, die, or a plagas will pop out, or you'll miss and you're liable to get hit with damage. There is a clear design in place for shooting. The mechanics aren't haphazardly thrown into the game. If it were, then the shooting would suffer and there would be merit to labeling RE4's gameplay as aged. However, it is so well crafted that the shooting is a masterful work of art. Never do I think the game is at fault for my mistakes. And the GameCube controller is peak. I know most consider the Wii version to be the best amongst console releases, but for the original release, it's perfect. Nintendo are known for designing their controllers around their games. The N64 and the Super Nintendo's controllers were designed to control Mario in the most optimal way. It was why Super Mario Galaxy is the odd one out, being a Mario game designed for its controller. With Resident Evil 4, it's like Capcom designed the controller for the game. I cannot describe how wonderful it feels to aim with the R trigger, shoot with the A button, run with the B button, pull out the knife with the L trigger, and then swipe with the A button. It's a wonderful fit for a third person shooter and I've never played one like it since. Even the PlayStation version, I try to change its settings so they're as close as possible to the GameCube, because let me tell you, this game feels much more clunkier to shoot with the triggers. You know, maybe we should have more shooters use the face buttons to shoot. Speaking of controllers, I think the source for a lot of grief with RE4 is from PC gamers who play the game with a keyboard. I assume that these are the SAME babies who took 5 minutes away from a Valorant match and think a controller will make pretzels out of their fat fucking hands. Shooters do play better with a keyboard, I won't deny that. And I don't have any experience with the game's PC port. All I can say is that if a game feels bad on keyboard, switch to a controller. Stop hampering yourself because one genre of video games feels better with a mouse and keyboard. One aspect of the game that has been criticized since the game's inception has been Ashley Graham. Many a meme about Ashley will lambast her for the escort quest portion of the game, but I will defend her. For starters, Ashley adds another layer of tension. She has her own health bar you have to manage, and if she dies, it's game over. Enemies will usually try to capture Ashley, and if they leave the area with her, it's an instant game over. Ashley will follow Leon at a fixed distance, and she'll stay if the player orders her to. If there are dumpsters nearby, she'll hide inside, and enemies will never think to pull up the lid. As a side note, when you begin escorting her through the village, there's usually a dumpster for Ashley to hide in, but during the castle area, there aren't any dumpsters. This is especially prevalent with the infamous water room, where it actively punishes you for hiding Ashley in one of the back rooms by dumping a Ganado who will kill her. To my recollection, the only other time the game brings back dumpsters is during the military base with the Iron Maidens. Anyway, the mechanics involving Ashley are competently made and well presented to the player. I honestly think that how Ashley walks at a fixed distance is a genius design. Plus, whenever she pumps her fist, whenever Leon gets a kill is a nice touch. Not the most necessary element, but touch is still there. I think in retrospect, Ashley Graham gets hate because she's the most prominent escort quest, or at the very least, was an easy mechanic to copy, and developers misunderstood what made Ashley work so well. Ashley Graham's escort quest works because all the mechanics tied with the core mechanics make for tense stretches of gameplay. While she won't win the most feminist character of the year, I do enjoy the growing camaraderie she and Leon share. That said, there could have been more. And maybe the remake makes her better. From what I heard, yeah, apparently so. 
Now, I can imagine some of you are asking, there has to be something that doesn't hold up. And you're right. No game is perfect, and Resident Evil 4 is not perfect either. What has aged poorly are the game's art direction and use of quick time events. I'm not one who can properly articulate what's wrong with the use of colors, being colorblind and all, but even I will admit that it's the overuse of browns and overall murky tone doesn't inspire love for the surroundings. It's only through gameplay scenarios that players have become so attached to areas like the first village, and while it gets slightly better in the castle, it dives back during the military base where you could call it derivative of other games. And lastly, quick time events. Their time and overuse have come to a past. They still have their use in action games like Metal Gear Rising and Kingdom Hearts 2, usually to activate a cinematic moment or to begin a finisher. But use in cutscenes has aged the worst. True, all the game asks you to do is to mash a button or click at the right time, and back then I can imagine adding tension to cutscenes was warranted. But there are better ways of implementing tension to story scenes rather than hitting a button to not die! It's the worst at Trouser's first boss fight, while cool on repeated playthroughs. It's just a hassle. And for ushering in an age of developers using quicktime events in worse ways, it's easy to lambast RE4 for being the progenitor. So that's that! I put all these decrepit babies in their place. You will play RE4 on the original GameCube, and you will like it! But in all seriousness, if you dislike Resident Evil 4, that's completely fine. My issue was with seeing several people in a Twitter thread claiming that they found the game to have aged poorly, which I find absurd. And it's not nostalgic bias speaking, I've played this game since 2014. Granted, nine years is a long time, but still, I didn't grow up with the game. I played it when I was sinking my teeth into video games. So, while I have been extremely vitriolic to people who claim the game has aged poorly, I'm more willing to lend an ear to people who just dislike it. Voice your opinions, I'm actually interested to hear what people think now that the remake is out. Although, I'm not interested if your opinion comes from a screaming baby that poops itself to death for seeing a low polygon count in a game they bought for $20, whose only meaningful contribution to our society is spending their mother's social security on Valorant skins! A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, uh. <laughs> You know, I could have saved myself a bunch of time by just tweeting, stop saying games age poorly and just say you hate old games. Oh well. Thank you for watching. I'm experimenting with other types of videos, so let me know if this tickled you. Later. about time. It was loud. It was stupid. Uh, not in a Michael Bay stupid way, but it was just kind of like, it was dumb, it was blunt, and, and obvious, and just poorly written, and annoying. I, I, I couldn't stand the end. Oh my god! Say that, you fucking poor!